CBS Evening News anchor Scott Pelley handled yesterday's special report on President Trump's news conference. He joins us now bright and early in the morning. Good to see you, Scott Pelley. Great to be with you, as always. It was quite an afternoon. I was watching your, your coverage, and I remember when you interviewed him before he became president, you said something to him that, like, you know, uh, Donald Trump, if you're elected, running the country is not going to be like running a company. And he said, we'll see. What is it we are seeing? Well, you know, I don't think he's mad at the media. You don't? I think he's mad at not being boss anymore. Huh. Any president comes in and he has to answer to the public. He has to answer to the Congress. He has to answer to the courts. And the only thing Donald Trump has done in his life is run a private family company. Yeah. I asked him in that same interview, I said, who tells you no? Very, very true, Stumped him. Yeah. He could not come up with a name of anybody who tells him no. But now as president, one of the most constrained jobs in the world, all day long people are saying, yes, sir, Mr. President, but you can't do that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The Even the news but, conference yesterday, Scott, he had it against the advice of his top advisors. Well, there are some things that the president could do, and that is yes. uh, call a news conference anytime he wants to. We were all scrambling to get on the air because uh, that was a completely unexpected and, and unannounced thing. But uh, again, this is what the founders had in mind when they created this system of checks and balances. Mm -hmm. They wanted the president, the Congress, and the courts to be mutually constrained. And uh, Donald Trump isn't the boss anymore. He's the apprentice, and he doesn't like that. He's already been constrained by the judiciary in terms of his executive order on immigration. He most like we haven't seen yet what the legislative branch will do. You have Republicans in control of the legislative no. branch. What is the onus on Republicans? And he's promised a lot of change, but we've yet seen that in terms of congressional action. Mr. Trump tweeted something this morning that I think just perfectly captures what he has yet to learn about being president. He said the Obamacare repeal and replace is, quote, moving fast, end quote. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a sixth of the American economy. It's three trillion dollars. Healthcare. Yeah. I'm sure it seems like it's moving fast when you haven't shown it to anyone. Mm -hmm. But when they roll this out, some significant amount of the public is going to say, well, yeah. that's not what we had in mind. And the Congress is going to say, Mr. President, thank you for your suggestion. Mm -hmm. uh, it won't be moving fast. And I think this will continue to dawn on the president as he moves forward. Despite the confusion of the of, of the past few weeks in this administration, the president insisted yesterday that his administration is a fine-tuned machine. Do you think he convinced the American public of that? Well, I don't think so. Uh, it the, the evidence just isn't there. And it reminds me of a wonderful quote from, from Harry Truman talking about his successor, Dwight Eisenhower. Eisenhower, of course, was the last president we had who had no political experience. And Truman said, poor Ike, he's going to say, do this and do that, and nothing is going to happen. It won't be a bit like the army. And he is president of the United States, yet he keeps bringing up Hillary Clinton's name. He, he brought he up her running name against several her times. yesterday, yes. wasn't he? Yeah. Yes. What do you make of that? Well, he needs. When a, will that stop, do you think? Uh, never. Uh, he, uh, he needs a foil to push against. So Hillary Clinton is that foil in some, some statements. The media is that foil very, very often. He needs, he needs a villain to be able to push against, to, to blame these constraints that he's feeling on somebody outside of his own inner circle. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the president currently has a national security advisor. It's not his permanent one. He wanted Vice Admiral Harward, who 40 years served in the Navy, Navy SEAL, who publicly turned down the president of the United States, his commander in chief. A military officer, essentially. Extraordinary. Yes, yeah. quite extraordinary. Who, who, uh, who has said to, it's, it's being reported that he told friends that he didn't want to be involved. It was like a turd sandwich, except he used the other word. He's using, he's saying it's because of public family matters and financial matters that he turned it down. But to Nora's point, but, but Major Garrett reported that it yeah. was because he he was not given authority to put his team his together. Own team his together. own staff. Yeah. Well, yeah. remember earlier this week, the 
general in charge of U.S. Special Operations Forces all around the world, the Navy SEALs, the Delta Force, our top terrorist fighters, said, quote, the government is in terrible turmoil. I hope they straighten it out soon because we're a nation at war. Mm -hmm. One of the things that's interesting, Scott, is, I mean, part of the Trump campaign was to advertise him as a successful businessman. But I think a lot of businessmen would look at the way the administration is running right now and say it's not actually very businesslike. You know, Nora was making a point before we were on the air that the Trump organization is not a public company, so he never had to answer to a board of directors. Yes. He never had to answer to anyone. And so in terms of business, we really don't know how Mr. Trump ran the Trump organization, but we're, we can certainly believe that he was not used to having anyone tell him no. If you had been there yesterday, what would you have asked him? Wow! Yeah. What a great. Uh, I, the, I have to take. Um, I have to say the press corps did a wonderful job, I and so I, I also have to say, good for the president. Yeah. Yeah. Good oh, for the president. I agree. For he walked out there yeah. and yes. took questions from all yeah. comers, yeah. and it was like it was never going to end. And he called on people like our Major Garrett, yes. who he knew yes. were going to ask the most difficult questions. So. Yeah. Absolute credit Kudos to the president for that. For that yeah. I have to say. I, I agree. And he and called he, on he called on everyone, almost everyone. It was a long press conference. He yeah. nearly wore him out. Which is what he did during the campaign too. <laughs> That's true. He did that during the campaign. Scott Pelly, always great to have you here. So good to be with yeah. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.